great matchup for you here today as they uh, get going here. We're a uh, wonderful uh, Wednesday morning and uh, lots of excellent curling we've seen already and uh, looks to be a good match again here as uh, Alberta does have the hammer here in the first end and they're looking to uh, take out the stone there that was uh, just placed in the forefoot. Gets it just off the nose and a little roll to the back eight. This Alberta team is out of the Left Bridge Curling Club and they're 2-0 oh already. They've uh, got wins over PEI in the Northwest Territories. The Newfoundland team is 1-1 one one with a loss to Nova Scotia but a win over BC and they curl out of the Cornerbrook Curling Club. Yeah. Interesting to see how they play this first end here. We're used to seeing quite a few blanks but uh, we had last night's feature draw and there was uh, certainly not a blank as uh, they had picked up three in the first end, so we'll have to see how this goes. It can turn around quickly, so. Newfoundland here, unfortunately, just uh, taking that one there as uh, they leave the Yellowstone in play, so. See where this uh, Alberta looking to likely split the house and see if they can get there too. As this one comes down the rink here. Looks a little warm, sweepers aren't on it, but we'll see if it finishes up. Seems to be digging into the house. Yeah, as it settles down there at the back of the eight. And that's a good spot to be, there's no double. Newfoundland will be looking just to hit that stone and stick it as their second Catherine Miles uh, takes aim here. Looks like good weight out of her hand here as the sweepers are just cleaning it here as it comes down and right on the lid and a little roll off to the side there as they'll sit for second shot in the back of the 12 foot. Both these teams here with at least one win under their belt, so they're starting to get comfortable with the ice as this is their third game apiece. Uh, looks like they're getting quite a bit of curl too, so it's nice to see that coming right out in the first end. Yeah, we've seen uh, typically about uh, three and a half to four feet of curl, which is really nice. The ice here at the uh, Ladue Curling Club is fantastic. It's uh, it's similar to arena ice and it's been fantastic all week so far and imagine it'll continue that way for the rest of the week. Catherine Miles at her second stone here. They'll be looking to remove that yellow stone from play. Looks like they're trying to get a bit of a directional brushing on it here as this one looks to be a little bit wide and that'll just slide by and it's a bit unfortunate there for uh, Newfoundland as they Alberta does have the hammer, so a chance now to get another stone in play. Where would you put this stone if you were throwing this shot? I like what the skip is calling for. She's trying to shut off the forefoot a little bit with her having hammers, so I think that it's a really good decision for her. really good. That sweepers are on this one here as they bring it into the house here. Weight looks close. Really nice draw. That's yeah, great positioning uh, just uh, <laughs> dead on the button there and there's no pockets at the moment so Newfoundland will just try and get rid of it here as the uh, 
Donna Davis gets ready for her first in this end. Maybe try for a little roll. A little roll over and uh, potentially you could end up uh, close to frozen on that stone would be a fantastic result. As it curls over here and just on the lid, but it's the first end too, you know, you want to get your legs under you a little bit and start feeling out that hit weight. And Now with uh, Alberta third, Samantha Davies, as she lets her first one go. This comes up here as it gets it just off the nose there and a little rollover. That's a good spot too there. It's uh, You're not going to get any double action. It'd be quite tough to do so and certainly couldn't stick your shooter. So it's good positioning here from Alberta where they're putting their stones and making sure that they... Uh, are looking for a multiple score here in the first end. Sweepers are called off of this one here. So they get it just off nose and a little roll to the side of the eight. I like the choice of hit weight they've selected. We saw a couple shots last night in our uh, feature matchup and that one was between Yukon and Ontario and we saw a, a few shots uh, where they uh, had selected a more of a down weight, a bit of a control weight, and that can certainly be useful. But in this first end, I like seeing the sort of positive release and positive hit weight here. It's uh, able to uh, get a good read of the ice and how much it'll move later on if they need to throw some high and hard ones. So this comes down, avoids the jam, and will it stick around? Oh, not quite, but still sitting too is Alberta. And they're on completely different sides of the house, so there'll be certainly no way to make a double on those. She's contemplating maybe a freeze or a, nope, she's gonna do a hit. Yeah, and it's certainly in a position where you could freeze to, I think the concern for them there is it's, is, is, is the first end. and. If you do miss the freeze, you could be looking at giving up three, so you want to make sure to remove this stone nice and clean here as we get our first look here at uh, Newfoundland and Labrador skip, and that's uh, Susan Curtis as she gets ready to throw her first stone here. You want to just hold them to two, and you know, if you hope for a miss, and maybe you can get a blank or a force out of it somehow, and so just wanting to keep it kind of clean here as uh, she lets go. a little bit of directional curl here as it slides down and she'll take it out. She'll spill her shooter, but removes the stone. So chance now for uh, Alberta skip Nanette Dupont to get her uh, draw weight under here, here as she'll draw to the other side of the rings. Try and keep that separation there. Yeah, the separation is critical with only one rock left from Newfoundland. You've got a pretty good shot at two, so just keep them spaced out and, and close to parallel if you can, and you're looking at getting a good two. She gets ready to throw here, and her first in the first end. Sweeper's not touching this one, but they're calling back four back eight, so wanting it to just settle down nicely near the back of the rings here is a good spot, as long as it's in play. So it looks to settle down here, and hands go up, and that's a nice shot. Really nice. She's got a little bit of that backing behind her, so a little bit harder to remove. Yeah, and I'm a little surprised to see Newfoundland go after this one. Uh, you know, there's the possibility of the jam, but she did just throw this shot, so she's probably feeling comfortable with the path, and uh, as long as she hits it on the high side, there'll be no concern. She'd like to stick her shooter. I 
probably would be for second shot. Uh, only uh, thing with that stone there is you do have to hit it a little bit on the high side there, right where uh, they're holding the broom. It's the side you need to hit that stone on just so you avoid the jam. But uh, looks like uh, as long as they remove it from play here, that's the key. For last here in the first end. It's down. Supers are on it a little bit here, but it does look pretty good. So they bring it in and it just off nice the beak. Shot. Yeah, it's a good shot there. Doesn't stick around, but chance for two now for Alberta, but a relatively well played end here from both teams. And Alberta will have a chance at there too. The so last rock here in the first end. Alberta with the yellow stones and skipping it DuPont as she draws for two. Let's go here. We'll see what the sweepers think of this one. Wait, looks good. Yeah, just cleaning it a little bit here. They don't seem too concerned about uh, the weight right now. It might be a little bit warm, but certainly I don't think any danger of it slipping out the back. Not at all as they just clean it in and great shot there by her. It's uh, always nice to get your draw weight under you in the first end and Alberta will pick up two and they lead Newfoundland by two after the first. Several other sheets of action in here. In fact, all eight sheets at this uh, Leduc Curling Club are active right now. We've got, on sheet B, we've got uh, New Brunswick playing Manitoba. That's the ladies' game. We've got a men's game between Northern Ontario and Saskatchewan. A men's game on sheet D between BC and Quebec. The ladies' game on sheet E is Ontario and Saskatchewan. Sheet F is Northwest Territories versus Nova Scotia, and that's the ladies' game. We also have on sheet G, we've got the men's Newfoundland versus Ontario. And on sheet H, we have the men's game of Yukon versus Manitoba. And all the scores for those can be found on curling.ca slash scoreboard. And we'll update on you as uh, those go on. Back to our feature here is uh, Alberta brings one just into the top 12 there. Oh, slides top eight. And Newfoundland going for the corner guard and not surprised to see that at all. You're down by a couple, but uh, only by two. And so getting those corner guards up, especially with this five rock rule that we have, it will certainly give them a chance to get some points for themselves right back. So lead uh, Carolyn Colborn here as she throws her first stone of the second end. slides just a sliver deep there as it does end up in the rings and it is fairly keen out there we've seen about a 14.5 to a 15.5 anywhere in that range typically for a draw to the button and that's a hog to hog times there so fairly slick so some of those tighter guards it's uh, easy to slip them into the top 12. Alberta being up by a couple points will look to be removing really any stones that's uh, Newfoundland puts into the rings as long as they can get at them and lead Alice to Kelver makes that one no problem. So she's not going to put up a, car, a guard here. She's going to come in to uh, freeze on this shot rock. Yeah, it's an interesting call. Uh, I think that's a partially a product of that first one slipping in. You although you would have a chance to put up another couple, uh, they could start peeling them fairly soon. And so maybe just wanting to get a, some stones in position into the house and, and bring this into more of a controlling the forefoot game. And certainly a freeze will help you do that. 
The weight on this one looks close. We'll see if it uh, stays on the line here. It comes up, uh, weight's really nice, over curls a touch, but still on the corner of that one. Can be removed though, and that's what Alberta will look to do here is begin second stones with Kendra Nakagama here from Alberta. Uh, that's a nice shot Very by her nice. as she removes the stone there, no problem. It's always great as the front end to feel like you've got your hit weight under you, and it appears they certainly do have that as they've made these first few hits with no problems here at all. They do not have the last rock, Alberta, but they are counting three at the moment, so. And closing in on the forefoot, which is really important when you're trying to do that steal. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean, they don't have any corner guard, or uh, sorry, center guards up there at the moment, but as long as they've got stones in play, they're a threat to the opponent, so. As they send this one down the rink here, as they hit it right on the beak, and see if they get both of them out there. And it does spill out a play there, so nice double there by... Newfoundland second, Catherine Miles. Great shot there to remove them from play and nice weight choice there. I mean, that one did just uh, just squeak out, but uh, nice weight choice. It's not, not, didn't overthrow that one at all. This one looks to be coming up quite nicely here as it crosses over the center line and she'll get it just off the nose. Now there does leave a double there for uh, Newfoundland, but those ones can be quite tricky. I mean, they are very close to each other, but they are parallel, so there's not really much of an angle to cut across. So an attempt there would need to be pretty good weight, and uh, the broom does indicate that we'll see some up weight hits here. This one comes down the rink here. Second stone from Catherine Miles and makes contact with both of them, gets rid of one and we'll see if that other one squeaks out. Oh, and I think it's just a biter there, but really nice attempt there. That's two great uh, hit shots there from Catherine Miles. She's had great weight on both of those there. Bit unlucky there really just to not have that one squirt out. And of course, uh, being above the T-line, uh, they. Uh, can't uh, act on it there, so. We all know how those little ones can count in the end. <laughs> That's right, those biters can make a big difference. Uh, thankfully, Newfoundland does have the hammer here, so you'll be able to avoid that as a hit and roll out there by Samantha Davies, and she'll remove that stone. So there is one uh, Alberta counter, just that biter there that we saw get moved around the last shot. calling to corner it. Yeah, it's a bit of an aggressive call, but they do have the hammer here, so I like uh, seeing them trying to get some points in action. They could blank it here if they wanted, pretty easy to remove that stone, but um, wanting to score some points in the even ends here, so putting up that uh, corner freeze. Let's see where this one finishes. If it is a little heavy, they can always go around it here. comes up. Uh, weight was really good on that one there. Just didn't quite uh, come over as much as they would have liked. Uh, just about the perfect weight there. This one comes down here and we'll get it 
just off the nose there, and I think both of those are now out of play. He's not in the house, so a Great chance. Pocket, yeah, absolutely. There's this, uh, that little area in between them there, and, and if they're able to capitalize, it'll be pretty tough to remove that stone. As Donna Davis here from Newfoundland is, let's go with the stone, and she'll be looking to freeze into that little pocket. As this one starts to catch some curl, sweepers are on this one. Weight looks close. Oh, and just a little rub off that top one there. It's uh, unfortunate the weight was perfect on that one, and it just caught the curl a little. That stone there is out, but yeah, just a perfect weight there. So a little bit unlucky to catch that top guard. They almost squeaked by it, and that would have been just about a perfect st shot is a risk of a jam here, so something they'll have to keep an eye on, and that yellow stone is real close, so they'll have to be on that one to see uh, if that does end up bouncing off the edge there if she does make contact with it. So, risk of a jam here, certainly. Annette DuPont in her first here in the second end for Alberta. Always have to watch these hits out to the wings here. They can start to curl really quickly, so something they'll keep an eye on here. This one doesn't uh, appear to be moving too much, and she'll get it by, avoids the jam, so great shot by her there, and she'll count one in the top corner of the 12-foot. Something I noticed the last few days is the time management of these teams have been really, really well. They've been um, settling in and not really letting that clock affect them. And it seems like most of the teams have been doing really, really well with that time management that they're not really used to when they're doing club curling. Yeah, that's right. They're both allotted 30 minutes of thinking time. And that's something that a lot of these teams, especially as this, uh, a lot of them, all they're all coming from the club level. so. A lot of them may have seen that in their provincial championships, but other than that, most of these players aren't used to that. And while it's, uh, most of them have been very fine with that in terms of uh, time left at the end, most of them have been had a reasonable amount left. But just one more little thing in your mind, there's so much to think about. It's, uh, you know, especially on our feature sheet A here, we've got, uh, of course, the mics and the cameras out there. So newer stuff for some of these players that maybe haven't experienced that before. So something just sort of in their minds and that clock is just one more little reminder. But uh, lots of hits and stuff definitely help get you some time in the bank and they've all been managing it well. Three, four. Three here. Susan Curtis lets her first one down this rink here is they're looking to get onto the corner of it here. It's like it's gonna freeze up, maybe. Might just catch a little bit of pebble there as it ends up uh, coming up just a little bit short, so not in the rings there. The weight was fairly close. It just may have overcurled on them a little bit at the end and caught a little bit of the frost on that side of the sheet. So nice weight call uh, there, but just a little overcurl. Alberta now with the chance to split the rings and force Newfoundland to take just a single point. We'll see if uh, the last from Alberta here, she'll be able to s do so, but her draw weight's been really nice in the first end. We saw she made both of them, so and she'll she's be. She's them off. She thinks it's a little bit heavy. This one doesn't have to be above the tee. It really just needs to be counting in the rings in the spot that'll stick around and this one does look a little warm though, so let's see if it settles down in the back of the house and unfortunately just creeps out the back. But an interesting situation now for Newfoundland. They can certainly remove it and go for a blank, but that's a tricky hit and that's a long roll across the w rings there too to try and roll out of play if they're looking for the blank. And so Alberta may get away with it here as they do go through the house with their draw, but. 
The rock's in a really good spot right now. It's really close to that red uh, one that's just out of play, and uh, you can't see that much of it. She's going to go for it, though. This is an interesting call here. I think they may actually be trying to hit their red onto that yellow there. Uh, as long as they catch it just about on nose, they should be fine. No worries there. They just can't hit it uh, too much on the high side because they might spill into the rings after and they don't want to score here, certainly. We'd rather take one than give up a steal, of course, but so number one is just to make sure this yellow rock is removed, but you're looking to keep that uh, red, it's not so much a guard, but you're looking to keep that red stone out of the rings. Last stone here in the second. Weight looks good. Sweepers are on this a bit here. It might be starting to go on them a little bit. But line looks close. They do knock it out of play, but they will stick around. So it'll be a single point there for Newfoundland. But uh, good effort just to make sure that yellow was removed and they're not giving up any points. So it'll be 2-1 for Alberta as they take the hammer into the third end here. On sheet B, Manitoba is up one against New Brunswick. We get set here to go in the third end, and Newfoundland will be throwing the first rock. <laughs> Carolyn Colburn here in her first stone. Shaking her head a little bit, not happy with this result. Yeah, this one's really sliding there, and it looks like it'll be just out the back as they just coast out there. And so, unfortunate result. And Alberta now with a chance to set up some guards, getting close and tight to the house, and, and maybe make some moves to get some aggressive uh, chances to score here. If they could pick up another two, it would be really good position for them. Those lead stones are so important, and I know like when people are club curling, sometimes it's like, oh, let's put the person that's least experienced in as lead, but those lead stones really do set up an end, and very, very crucial, as you can see in this end. Yeah, with the five rock rule, it's really changed the way it was. I mean, they, uh, you know, with the, like you say there, with the lead, sometimes you put the least experienced person there, but now they're just as absolutely critical as all of the other members. These teams don't work unless they're all working, so they're one big unit. And, and with uh, the importance of that uh, free guard zone and those five rocks that can't be removed uh, early in the end, it's it's critical that the placement of them is, uh, and you've got uh, someone who's uh, competent at uh, getting them in the right spot. So a lot more important than it used to be where there was uh, the guards were a little less relevant where you could peel them immediately, but can't do that now. They put up a guard here, Newfoundland, just off the center line there. Alberta's got a guard there as well, really tight to the ring, so might be something they could even consider later in the end. If it's still around, they might be able to split it in. Perfect so, for the come around right now. Yeah, lots of coverage there, and you can get kind of in between them. That port's really tight between those two if it's even there, so. In the uh, Saskatchewan-Manitoba game we had, uh, Yesterday, that's uh, those guards up close that ended up really mattering. They were able to, Saskatchewan in the first end, they were able to split those guards and that's actually not what they had called, but they split them in and they ended up with five that end. This one slides a little deep, but not out as it hangs on just behind the back eight. 
it is buried. But a chance now for Newfoundland to get aggressive as well, go under that guard, see if they can keep something in the top four and try and get a lock on this end. Choosing a similar path, and there was a little bit of room there uh, for the Alberta stone, so they should be okay with this ice. On this one pretty quick. It's really starting to curl. A bit of room still, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks like it'll be by. Now we'll see where it stops. Really nice placement. Yeah, that's a fantastic shot there uh, by Newfoundland's second, Catherine Miles, as she puts it in a really good position there. It's it is just behind the tee, so we'll be able to freeze to it. But in fact, Alberta's going for the hit. What do you think of this call here? It's aggressive. I mean, there's lots of things that can happen, but I mean, they could at least remove that center stone if need be. Alberta's been good on hits. If they can get through, they could be in a really good position. This one's hanging a little bit, but it starts to move now. We've seen nice movement. If they can get by those two guards, it does not quite, but let's see where this yellow goes. That's an interesting result as both of the guards get shuffled around. And they did remove that front red one, so job well done. Yeah, absolutely. That's a pretty good plan B. Alberta does still have two stones in the rings. They are behind the tee, but they're certainly usable. And that red stone is exposed as well, so nothing to hide behind at the moment for uh, Newfoundland. So they'll likely be looking to make a freeze here onto the stone uh, at the back uh, of the eight foot. I'm not sure if a freeze there would quite get them shot rock, but it would certainly be a good position to be in. As they go for a little bit of directional here. This one's not curling quite as much as I think they were intending, but it does start to move over here a little bit at the end as it coasts in. Let's see where it ends up. Kind of stuck, uh, unfortunately for them, a little bit in between those two yellows. So now a chance to make the double. And uh, as long as you hit that one there, that's just behind the forefoot first uh, with a little bit of uh, about half a rock, I would say. You'd be able to remove both of those stones, no problem. Not much risk of a jam either here, unless you're really off on the line. And this one starts to curl, but they are on it. As they're called off, this looks close. It's going to be very close, and looks good. Called and made, fantastic shot there by second Kendra Nakagama from Alberta. And she's had great hits all game so far. Yeah. So we look at the replay here, and. It's a textbook there, half a stone, and gets rid of them with a, no issue. So great shot by her. We can land looking uh, likely to make a, a double here, and certainly can be done. And right now, it's we're not quite at damage control, but you'd certainly like to remove some of those yellows. This one looks to be hanging a little wide, but starts to move over now, and we'll see if they can get a couple of them out. Okay. Well, right on the nose, but it is in a okay spot. It's a tight stone to remove. Uh, you have to worry about the jam, certainly. If you're Alberta, I think you focus mostly on making sure you remove the red stone, even if you do clip your yellow at the back of the eight foot, as long as your shooter sticks around, you're still sitting too, so. Although they'd like to pick it clean, I'm sure they'd be not too upset if they unlocked uh, their back yellow as well. There's nice separation there. There's definitely room. This one's curling pretty hard as the sweepers are on it here. This one might jam and does, removes their back yellow and that red one's still in place. So a chance now to maybe start to get to a little bit aggressive for Newfoundland now. They've got a chance to bounce back, remove some yellow granite and maybe look into getting a position at a force and that'd be a good result after they were picked up one in the last end so this one comes down the sheet here 
Sweepers called off a bit now. This looks close. It's a nice stone as they remove one of the yellows and roll over. Does leave probably a double there again, similar to the one we saw earlier. So looks like Alberta will be happy to try and take that on. You know, even if they remove the one at the back of the forefoot and roll right on top of that red, that's not a bad result either. So if you hit it a little thick, that's the miss here. Yeah, controlling that top of the house, always important, and the forefoot. Last of the third rocks here in the third. So they're on this one, and great shot as she makes the double, so. Really good result there for Samantha Davies as she finishes her last stone for the end. See, there was just to remove those two. Now there is a double there. It is fairly flat, but they are close together, so it certainly can be made. A little bit more weight should do it, and looks like they'll be looking to take that on. Again, if they do hit it a little thick and roll over to the yellow, uh, semi-frozen would not be the worst result as well. There is a bit of a guard, doesn't provide a ton of coverage, but might start to bring the jam into place. So Susan Curtis, and her first stone here in the third end. Oh, that's an unfortunate uh, miss for them there. That one looked close, but right through the hole, it'd be tough to throw that one again if you tried. And a bit unfortunate, a bit unlucky for them there. So unfortunately, don't remove any of those stones. And Alberta has a chance to figure out where they'd like to go as they discuss where they want the stone. What would you do in this situation? You know, I think I'd put it in the eight foot. Um, top eight would be a pretty good spot. I wouldn't aim for the forefoot because if you do come a little deep it's pretty easy to set up a freeze pocket yeah. so I like top eight above their stone in the forefoot it provides a little bit of cover for them and if the freeze is made it allows them to run something back to potentially remove the stone and and still score a couple or more so I like top eight uh, above it looks like they may be headed to the other side which isn't a bad call at all and it'll leave them some space as Hunt discusses with her front end where the stone should go. When you have hammer, you can take these chances, right? Yeah, certainly. You do have a few stones in the rings already, so. Decision made as she settles in. And oh. oh, we'll reset there. Good call. Her first stone here in this third end as she looks to put it top eight and keep control of the house. Reaper's not on this one, but the weight looks close. Should go across nicely. Yeah, a little scrub in here. It looks like it'll be in a really good position. That's a really good spot as it slides just to the T line there. We haven't seen a lot on that side of the ice, so it was a really good call on her weight as well. Yeah, and good judge by the sweepers there as well to not jump on it right away. That can be the temptation. If you've seen a couple draws especially come up short, you want to get on it right away, but good judge for them there to wait and not jump it. And, and There might be a double there, but you'd have to throw a lot of weight, so Newfoundland looking like they'll be taking on the other double there at the back of the house. Second attempt. Let's see if we get a better result. Yeah, got to remove at least one of these stones. Seems like it's curling. It does look close. And it's high again. Oh, that's a really unfortunate there for them as it goes right through the hole of them both. And you won't be happy with that one. And I wonder if it's something with the ice that it's just not quite curling with that weight. 
Yeah, and you know, we see them here trying to get a little bit of action on it to get it, and it just squeaks through those. And it could be something on the sweeping call there as well. They were getting a little bit of directional there, and certainly they did get close to making contact with the stone, but it's possible they could have made the double the other way as well. So um, I've seen uh, it might have been communication, but there's uh, certainly it's similar to her first one in that it got so unlucky uh, it was within uh, less than an inch of, of making contact and probably making that shot. So now a chance for Alberta here just to draw anywhere into the paint and pick up four and give themselves a fantastic lead after three. So sweepers off this one, but it looks good. As it just coasts in, and that'll be a big score of four for Alberta as they'll take the lead six to one after three ends. Didn't see that coming halfway down the end, but uh, Alberta just kept sneaking a few more stones in there and it's worked out well for them. On sheet B, we have a 2-1 score. Manitoba is down. And on sheet C, we have a 0-0 for Saskatchewan and Northwest, uh, Northern Ontario. As we get going here in the fourth end, Alberta's got a healthy lead, so looks like they are going for the guard here, and although they'll be looking to hit most of their opponent's stones, seeing if they can maybe sneak this in. Not quite, but it's, it's tight, so be able to bump it up if they need to. Newfoundland, uh, not surprisingly, will be headed for those uh, all-important corner guards and try and generate some points. We saw a score uh, similar to this uh, last night uh, between the game of uh, UConn and Ontario and UConn was down but they came back and they were able to win the game in two stolen ends. That was a fantastic game to watch. We had extra end action and UConn stole their way to a win two ends in a row there. They stole and so still time for Newfoundland to get back in it. It's only the fourth end so including this one we've got five ends total to go so still time. A little bit heavy on that guard again. It hangs on for a biter just in the back 12 there. Likely see Alberta hit it and that does uh, look to be the call. When you're up uh, with a lead like this, you just want to remove any of your opponent's stones that are in the rings and um, the less rocks there are, especially of your opponent's color, the less chances they're going to have to make freezes and things like that and have chances to generate to points for themselves. So looking just to keep it clean is Alberta. And gets to it there and sticks around. So got one at the back 12 as well. See Newfoundland here go for the corner once again. they work hard on it here. It looks like she may have just pulled the string there, maybe a little bit of an overcorrection from her last one as it was heavy, and that one, unfortunately for them, won't quite make it over. Sometimes it really can get to you when you're struggling with your weight. It's like, oh, I need to pull it back, and then you do, and sometimes you just have to trust yourself and trust your legs underneath you and, and just get back into your routine. And I think that might be what she's struggling with right now. Yeah, I mean, curling is really so much of it is a mental game, and so you think about it a lot. Uh, you think about the shot too much, and all of a sudden you can sometimes have things go wrong. So certainly something to keep an eye on. And but lots of time still in this game, so as long as they can believe that they're still in it, Newfoundland, I, I think they've certainly got a chance to start mounting a comeback. 
absolutely. Just one in makes all the difference, right? Pick up two, and all of a sudden it doesn't look quite as bad. That's right, yep. Two or any more than that would be a, a great uh, position to get themselves in here. Still early here in the week, but Newfoundland has, uh, they've gotten their legs under them before. They've they picked up their win over BC, and so they've, they know the feeling, so they can think about that moment to they can try and get themselves back into this. This one just uh, sneaks over the line there. Yeah, they stopped sweeping it. They didn't want it to like jam on those yellows and maybe bump them in. So it's yeah, that's right. To yeah, for sure. No, you don't want any action on those, and you probably don't even want to readjust the angles on them. If they can get some things buried under there, it's actually not too bad. That high guard would really um, stop Alberta from being able to to run those straight back into something. So if uh, Newfoundland can get something buried here in the next couple of rocks, they could they have a pretty good chance of keeping it underneath there have to start seeing quite a few peels. Line looks good. It's just all about the weight. Yeah, it's curling now, but looks like it might be a little bit heavy here. We'll see where it ends up. Finishes just in the back forefoot. Break here. I think if they were to like remove that, they might even go to row behind those guards. So we'll see um, Newfoundland here trying to come down to this one and just tap it back. I don't think they're looking to fully remove it from play, and they don't need to, as long as it's. I mean, it's already behind the T-line, but a little bump back leaves some jam possibilities for Alberta. So looking to just give it a little nudge here, and the weight looks really good, actually. So if they can actually get to the inside of this, this is a great shot. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah, that's a really nice shot there as it comes up uh, right to it. In fact, doesn't even move it, so perfectly uh, right to the corner. Might be able to remove it, but uh, likely will move around that yellow stone in the process. And it'll be tough to stick your shooter if you're playing a little bit more weight, and we'll see what sort of ice they're looking at giving for this. Weight choice made here. It looks like they'll be playing about normal weight. And you like the choice of weight here? I think it uh, gives you the possibility to still stick your shooter around as long as you make solid contact with it. So it looks a little wide. We'll see if it comes up. And unfortunately it does not, so uh, it does remove the stone that it was frozen to, but unfortunately for Alberta it was their own color, so not the greatest result, although it is completely unlocked now, so any contact with that stone would remove it from play. A chance for Newfoundland to try and get in behind those guards now. Yeah, and if they can get it uh, even half buried, even close to frozen on their own, that'd be a pretty good spot because it would be really tough to make a double uh, if any of it is buried. Given that there's three guards there, you wouldn't be able to throw much weight, so it'd be pretty tough to remove more than one. Donna Davis throws her first stone here. We'll see where this goes. It's maybe a little warm. If they can bump that red under cover, and they do a little bit, uh, it's a pretty tricky double there, given that the stone on the side of the forefoot is a little higher than the other one. They're close enough that I think it's worth taking on, and hit it a little thick, you'll still be frozen over to it, so not a bad result if they end up with that. But looking to remove both of them. If that red had rolled a little farther, this uh, it wouldn't be possible, and it'd be dead buried. This one looks to be moving pretty good, and, and Newfoundland's earlier guard there might end up coming uh, in to help them as it gets by the first one, and oh, just nice. sneaks by those, Very and just nice a fantastic shot. shot there from Samantha Davies of uh, Team Alberta. Yeah, that's uh, the uh, only thing with that one. Uh, great sweep there by the front end to get that by. I thought it was on that uh, pair of yellows there yeah, for sure. Yeah, I did too. 
nice just shot. gets by and man a little unlucky they're so close to avoiding that jam and yeah if they did they'd be even better spot but now newfoundland to although they did have their stones one of them removed they have a chance to sit two And a two here would feel pretty good after just giving up a, a, a big four, but that two gets you closer to that uh, gap as this one comes in. And oh, and just nice. avoids a jam a little nice. rub, but nice great job. positioning for that stone now too. It's uh, above the tee line on top of the button, so, and that stone at the back is still in play. Just gets a little uh, nudge as it goes by and a little cute with it there, but. A uh, couple of taps for Job well done by the Newfoundland team, and I think I feel a little bit of momentum changing for this guy. For these yeah, guys. that's right. It's always got to feel good when you see only your own color in the rings, and even better when there's more than one of them. And get two here would be just a fantastic position for them to get within three points. Uh, talked about in the past uh, few games is um, if you can be within three, but even more so if you can get yourself to back within two. Um, I always believe that if you're within two, you always feel, even if you're trailing, you always feel like you have a chance at a game. And so uh, it's all important to get within that zone, three, two, uh, you always feel like you're still back in it, even if you're trailing, so. And scoring in the even ends as well. When it's that's right, game, exactly. Right? And uh, so if they can force the opponent or you know, get some momentum there, they might be able to get themselves uh, a force or even a steal. And, and uh, a force would be nice as well next end and to take the hammer back into into six. And so some positives here for Newfoundland as long as they're able to get their two here and it's looking pretty good. This one will just be a, a hit. And Now if you're Newfoundland, if you are trailing, you ever consider a, you, a jam's probably not a concern anymore. Do you ever consider, consider trying to go for that hit and roll? I mean, it's always there um, and Right now, it's about trying to get that deuce, whichever way you can. So it's got, it comes down to her, co her confidence, too. Is it, am I more confident in my hits right now, or is my draw game on? And that's, I think, where the decisions are made. Yeah, certainly. Uh, you know, and pretty low risk of the jam here, uh, even if you do hit it a, a little bit off nose. As long as you're a high side here, there's no risk of it. And this looks pretty good here as it just comes in. Really nice. And she'll get it just uh, about right on nose there. And so sitting two. There's a possibility that they could look at making the double, but I think the focus uh, for Alberta being up the, as many points as they are will just be to remove it. Um, and if they get it, they get it. And I think that's uh, probably their mentality on it. They could try for it. It's not a ton of risk, but... Um, think mostly just looking to remove a stone here, content to give up two. Alberta played well this end as well to get themselves out of trouble a little earlier, making that nice double certainly helped uh, help them out. Uh, they could have been looking at a lot more red stones if they hadn't made uh, some of those hits. So got to be happy here to only be giving up two and I think they're okay with it as they'll take hammer and be up three if all continues. This looks close here from uh, Alberta Skip, Minette DuPont, as she, the last stone comes down the rings here, and she'll get it right on the lid, and so chance now for two for uh, Newfoundland, and it would mean quite a lot to get uh, some points back in this here and get themselves within three points, so looking just for a nose hit here. For Alberta as well, they are not feeling too bad about this. They made some nice hits this end to get themselves out of trouble, and they'll be taking Hammer into five, uh, and they'll be uh, up three uh, as long as this is made. So still a good position for them. They'll be feeling strong. This is just a nose hit here, but this shot is, is not so much about the difficulty of the shot, but just making sure it's executed. That'll help everyone... Uh, get back into it and for Newfoundland they'll be feeling good as long as this is made and it looks close. Needs to come up a little more. Does make contact with it so it's out of play. Unfortunate there to roll out and uh, they will score though so they'll get uh, a point and they'll trail by four. 
just a little disappointing when you can see that deuce and it just slips away from you just so slightly. That's right. Sometimes those nose hits on the center line are, are the harder shots to make because you eye them up and it seems like you're good, but, uh, you know, a little bit off. And I'm surprised that one didn't curl a little bit more on them. Uh, it wasn't... Uh, the weight choice was solid, but it wasn't too heavy, and I thought it would move a little bit more towards the center, but as the game goes on, just got to keep an eye on those paths and see what the hits are doing. They can change end to end, and so just something to keep an eye on. So Alberta will be happy to only give up one there. And Curling isn't a book to be judged by its cover. On these sheets, everyone is on the same page. It's what's on the inside that counts. The path to victory isn't always smooth. We use friction as an advantage and adversity as an opportunity. The battle is within ourselves to improve, to advance. We dream big. We play with heart. We focus on these circles and imagine podiums in far off places. Curling is what the world needs right now. Connection to one another, one team, one community. Curling is more than a sport. It's a lifestyle, a philosophy, a movement, a belief in self, in kindness, in good health, and in good fun. Supported by a passionate community steeped in tradition and united in pride. In a game of inches, every move counts. Are you ready to make yours? The support of the curling community makes it possible for thousands of kids across Canada to follow their dreams on and off the ice. Thank you for giving generously.
All right, welcome back everyone to the uh, Canadian Curling Club Championship. We're here in Leduc, Alberta as we bring you back to our feature matchup here between Newfoundland and Alberta. Alberta got a big four a couple ends back and they're now uh, up by four as uh, they have the hammer here in five. Looking across the other sheets here, we've got all she eight sheets in action right now. The Manitoba ladies are playing uh, New Brunswick and they're tied at two apiece. It's been four straight blanks for the uh, men of uh, Northern Ontario and Saskatchewan, so they're tied at nothing. We've got um, Quebec and BC and uh, Quebec is up for one it looks like over there. We've got uh, Ontario playing Saskatchewan on the ladies and Saskatchewan leads by four there. We've got uh, over Northwest Territories and uh, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia leads that one four to two. Uh, and Newfoundland Labrador on the men's side is playing Ontario and it's a two one game for Ontario right now after three and on our farthest sheet over we've got uh, Yukon playing Manitoba and Yukon is up four to one. So we had a little break and a reset and we're starting to see those guards come up from our lead from Newfoundland. Yeah, not surprised to see that at all and, and that's what you'd expect. They're down a few points and without hammer they're looking to get a few rocks into position here. This one looks fairly close, might be a little warm, but I might sneak around it actually and that better there than a rub off actually so they'll put one around in the back eight, but that's certainly a better result than rubbing that yellow and rolling open because uh, Alberta being up would certainly remove that from play as soon as they could. So um, they do have a stone in play. They're just a little warm for the freeze, but got around and they've got something to potentially use later on. We see Alberta lead Avista Kelver here as she throws her second stone of the end. Beautiful facility here in Leduc. I remember when they were building this complex and uh, it was just sheets of ice and, and uh, not a whole lot else going on yet. And it was just so exciting to see it come to a small community so close to Edmonton so they can host these kind of events. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Leduc's played host to a lot of, uh, last year they had the Curl for Canada. We had four national championships going at once. So they're no strangers to hosting a lot of them. And even right now, just across the way in the Sobeys Arena, we have the Home Hardware Canada Cup of Curling. It's Canada's top uh, seven men's and women's teams uh, respectively are looking to win that event. Uh, the grand prize there is uh, the berth into the 2021 Olympic trials. Uh, so... Definitely they are looking to pick that up. That's a big win if they can secure that in this, uh, really the, one of the first uh, new years here of this uh, Olympic cycle. So they're absolutely looking for that. And there's uh, certainly a lot of space here in Leduc as well. We've got the, uh, several uh, hockey arenas and uh, we've got this full eight sheet uh, curling center here. They've got a pool and a running track and um, lots of grassy fields outside as well for things like soccer and so great complex here. Absolutely. They run it all year long, too. They have the Alberta Rocks um, curling that happens in the summer. And it's a great event to help get our youth going in curling as well. Yeah, absolutely. I've done that. I did that camp uh, several years back, and it's a, a fantastically run. There's a lot of uh, great stuff going on there. So Alberta looks to make a hit here, and uh, we'll catch it just off the nose as they do sit three clustered around uh, different sides of the forefoot here. So good rock positioning for them so far to have some things to work with. So we'll see uh, what Newfoundland wants to do. Um, they do have uh, two of those Alberta stones, or one of them's uh, completely buried, but might be able to get at it. The guard's fairly long, and so be able to get around and maybe just tap it back. Doesn't need to be removed from play, but you'd just like to have a stone near the top of the forefoot there to work with and potentially tap back again. So. Looks like that might be what they're doing here as they'll likely look to come around the guard and just bump it back. And it's really about having good positioning in your stones. You want to have uh, stuff to work with. You know, you don't need to always throw big weight and try and remove stuff from play. You just want to have stuff to work with. Might be on that guard. Yeah, this one's curling pretty hard here. They'll want to roll this if they can. space there to get in there. Yeah, you can definitely get through there. Uh, 
be able to throw the out turn at that eye and uh, access uh, at least uh, the yellow there that's in between those two reds. And so Belger is electing to put up a top 12. Good call, because if they do come through that port, then she's still sitting nicely on the other side of the sheet. Yeah, and I like, you know, tight guard or within the top 12 area because it gives you something to tap back, and uh, that's always handy. Uh, they do have the hammer, but, you know, Newfoundland could pretty easily get a good stone in there and you want to have something to, and especially if that's a tight port, it's nice to have something to work with just to bump back. The sweepers are off this one here and this one looks like it might be going a little deep, so we'll see where this one ends up. Just a little warm, but they are counting four stones at the moment. Newfoundland looks like they'll be looking for a hit and roll and if they can get it into a good spot here, that could be a really nice stone for them. It'd be pretty tricky to remove if you can get it uh, between those two yellows on the right side of the forefoot. It'd be really tough to make a tap onto those, so without at least removing some cards. So really good call. Good chance here as well. And you may get that back yellow on the side of the forefoot they're moving as well, so a chance to maybe move two stones around. This one starts to come up a little bit here. It curls over. I'm not sure if it'll move enough. I think it's right angle. Not quite, but gets it behind. So that's uh, actually important there. They didn't remove that other one from play, but they did move it far enough to now that it's its fourth shot. So Newfoundland third shot at the moment, but did move some stones around. And so there is room as well on that side of the forefoot to start maybe making some action there. So, and that port's still available. So. I think Alberta's trying to shut off this port now. They're trying to like get their yellow stone right in front there so that, that it's not just a direct hit. Yeah, I like top 12, top eight here is a pretty good spot to put it. Again, gives you something to work with. This one's not moving a ton, but it might a little bit more. We've seen them go pretty good past the hog line and now we can see it start to move as it cuts across the Curling Canada logo there as it comes just top 12 and that's a really nice shot there good team shot uh, good judging and communication all the way down been really impressed by the communication between all these teams this week and they've uh, done a great job of ensuring good weight calling and good line calling and they've all been really vocal with each other which has been just really excellent for the results gives you a lot more control over your shots if everyone's talking absolutely it's really important to have that team communication as Newfoundland is going to come down and have a little chat right now as to what they're going to do. Yeah, and you can get through that port and uh, you can hit that rock there that's just on the top of the forefoot closest to the center line. Be tough to jam as well. The way that you'd have to go through there would probably lead you to hit that yellow on the high side. So not a ton of danger um, taking that on, at least uh, for the jam. Uh, and if you get through that port, you could be a uh, second shot, which would be a great spot to be in. If, if they're second and third shot, that definitely puts a little bit more pressure on Alberta to try and start doing something about those stones. And so the way they're lined up right now, it actually provides more jam opportunities for Alberta. So a good shot here by Newfoundland would uh, allow them to start forcing Alberta to make some tough shots at the port. That's a good call by the third two to come down and have a look at what they're going to be hitting and so she can get a little bit closer eye view as opposed to sitting in the hack and guessing. Yeah, just over curled on them there. The weight choice was good, but it does uh, it does open it up though and you can certainly get at both of those stones now and um, might be able to get a sneaky little rock down there, bump a few things around and, and get to sort of frozen to something. So. Not a bad plan B, it, it opens it up. like she'll just be guarding those stones and does a good job of it. That's a good spot for that stone. Really nice spot. Does cover it up. There's uh, no port. Uh, looking now, it may be uh, 
potentially some run backs with those yellows. There's a lot of yellow stones, so there's a lot of things to move around. The other option they might be looking at, and it may be the one they're going with here, is to draw around. It's a bit of a risky call, but if you can get around and under cover, if you could get it partially buried, even halfway under that uh, yellow stone in the forefoot, it could be really, really tough to remove uh, with a run back. So um, if they can get a good one in here, it forces Alberta to make a really tough shot. This is a good call because a lot of people, when they're looking at all that yellow, they're tempted to like, let's remove, let's remove. And she's staying calm and cool. And she's like, nope, let's try and get that dry in behind and see if we can sit shot. Yep. And they'll still have one more rock after this. and. Um, and the, the hits are, are tricky as well because the first stone that you need to hit isn't, uh, is, you know, like four for fifth shot. So um, moving that one in and then still needing to make a double, you know, you're also promoting your opponent's stone farther in the house. And if you don't get it to, to spin off to the other side, then, you know, you're not gaining much advantage. So I like this call. If this is made, they can have a rock in a good position. One's hanging out a little bit. The weight does look close. It moves close at the end here. Let's see where this settles down. It sits down, not for shot stone, but it is a third shot there. So they are sitting third and fourth shot at the moment. Uh, that one isn't buried. They could get at it, but um, it is at least half a stone under cover. So if they wanted to go after it, wouldn't be able to play too much weight. But looks like they'll just be drawing themselves, looking to get a third stone in there near the forefoot. And, and now the skip from Newfoundland has had a chance to do that draw in case she has to do it with her last rock. That's right, and she, she may have to. And, you know, the thing is, if Alberta comes a little bit deep here, it may open up a pocket for Newfoundland to come right into. And as you said, she just threw the draw. So uh, certainly an opportunity... Uh, you know, at least you learn something about that path. And uh, they are sitting third and fourth shot, and they're tough to remove, so we're not likely not looking at a, a massive score here for Alberta, so still some, some opportunities for Newfoundland here. You know, a good draw, even if you could hold uh, Alberta to one, would feel pretty good if you get the hammer back, and in, in an even end would be nice, so... Steel would be nice, but a force would also feel not too bad as well. First skip stone for Alberta here comes down. I think it's going to be heavy. No. Hard sweep, and it's going to be hitting that front stone. So that draw is still there, and like I said, the Newfoundland team has just thrown that, so she should be feeling fairly confident with this draw. That's right, and, and although there's not much to stop on, you do have a little bit of backing, and, and if you stop uh, directly on that back one there, you may in fact even get to second shot. It's hard to see for sure for up here, but uh, you know you can throw the path you just threw, and if you can get it even half buried, it'd be a, a tricky shot for Alberta to remove. So if you can get it um, fully under cover, even if it's only second shot, that'd be a great result. Final stone here for Newfoundland, Labrador, as Susan Curtis throws her last. Lots of line on this one. They've got lots of room. They said the weight's about a five or a six, and that's usually around top four, so the weight would appear to be close. It's more about line now. Yeah, the weight was close there. They were sweeping it a bit at the beginning, and so... A bit unfortunate for them there. So a draw for three, I believe it is now for Alberta. They'll need to get uh, close to the forefoot to pick up a third point. And they have that little bit of backing from the red now too. So even if she is a little bit heavy, she should have a solid. That's right. She can come down on that one and it'd be absolutely fine. So. 
mainly just the line there for uh, Newfoundland. The weight was close. They swept it a little bit, but uh, they would have had that back. And so it just didn't want to move over for them. And, and I don't know if uh, she threw it maybe a little bit wide, but it just didn't seem to get that action. And I think once you get it out to a certain point outside those four foot lines, it really doesn't want to come back into the center. So final stone here in the fifth end for Alberta as they look to pick up three more and take a big lead on Newfoundland. I mean, they're just coming off of a break too. I don't think it affects the ice that much for the curl, so. That's right, yeah, not, not too much of a difference. And this looks close, but might, oh, that's close, but I think they, uh, I think they got it, so I think it's three. And as they have a look, they kick it away and looks like it'll be three. And that was a close one there that almost rolled a little bit too far for them. They did have the backing, but hit it a little bit high, but it looks like that's three. And that would be a 9-2 lead for Alberta after five. As we head into the sixth end here, as Alberta will have a healthy lead heading into that. Newfoundland now with the hammer, so Alberta will throw the first stone in this end. She's calling for it in the house. She's not looking for a guard at this point. No, at this point in the game, up by as many as you are, you're not looking for any guards. In fact, you'd prefer if there were no guards at all would be the best for them. So um, they're looking just to put stones in the rings and hit out anything Newfoundland throws into the rings. So we'll see what Newfoundland chooses to do. They know Alberta will hit any stones they put in, especially at this point. So I would imagine they'll be looking to throw some guards. Biter there from Alberta. And the corner guard from Newfoundland on the door. Yeah, not a surprise at all there. They need to try and generate some points here. Still three ends to play. Our next feature game on the sheet will be at uh, 2 p.m. and that'll be uh, Nunavut versus the Northwest Territories. So a battle of up north. So tune in for that one. That'll be the ladies playing that one. So it slips tight, but not in, so there is something to go around there for uh, Newfoundland. Absolutely. It's actually a really nice position for them. Alberta still working their side of the ice. They're going to come around that front one. Looking for a little bit of sweeping action. They might get a little tick off here. Not quite into the rings with that one, uh, but they do have something to bump up again if they need to, and they do have one in the rings there, just on the side of the eight foot. be looking probably to either make another corner guard here would be uh, pretty good if they could have two a little bit staggered off each other certainly provides a lot of opportunity to get something around it it is moving nicely here towards the end as it finishes tight to the rings but not in so they are offset a little bit there so a rock underneath there would be tricky to remove Stones now from Alberta. Calling for T. See if it's there. 
Yeah, I think they're looking just to maybe make this little bump up on that rock. That's the weight that they had asked for, so I think that should be close. They'll be looking to move that stone there into the rings as well, and they execute, so that's a nice shot as long Very as this nice. sticks around, and it does, so great shot there. They've got lots of coverage now, and in fact, that rock rolling to the top 12 there makes it difficult to both get around uh, buried, so the port is still there, but it is uh, significantly tougher now to get through there. Um, as if we're getting, as we've seen, a little bit of late finishing on some of the stones. So uh, to get through there and then buried is, is not an easy task. So looks like they may be looking to get rid of it here. Yeah, she's hoping to like maybe roll behind those red ones with her shooter if she can. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a chance as well to potentially remove some of the stones on the side there as well. So um, a hit and roll would be really nice if you could get directly underneath them. Uh, sort of halfway between them would be tough to remove. The sweepers are on this one. And it's going to hit the wrong side for the roll. Yeah, over curls a little bit here, but maybe they can roll on top of the other one. That's not bad. They do a little bit of separation there, but not a bad plan B. They get some movement over to the other side, and that's uh, it can be removed, but it's always tricky. A little wide here could very easily lead to a jam, so they do have to be a bit careful. I'm a little surprised to see them playing this turn at it, actually, but they've thrown a lot down this path, so they should know it. No. As they go for a little... From Alberta's been having a really good game, so I think she's got a lot of confidence in what she's throwing right now. Yeah, and unfortunately there, though, for them, they do still sit two, so nice shot to at least remove it, and I'm sure being up this many, they're not too sad to lose uh, some of those catchers, but does end up removing... Uh, two of her own stones in the process, but unlocking the back isn't the worst thing to do there. When you're up uh, this many, you're not too concerned about keeping a bunch of extra stones around. It often can end up hurting you, as we saw as how close that stone was to being frozen. Um, and so nice execution at least to get it, and the rock rolled to a good spot into the top four. Chance now to hit and roll underneath. They could take that on, hit the rock on the forefoot, and roll underneath. Uh, would leave an opportunity for Alberta to play the bump there on that uh, stone that Finland just had the broom on in, in the top in the top eight. But uh, I like I think I like the hit and roll. You know, you want to generate some points, and if you can get it buried under there, it does force Alberta to play a pretty tough tap. Little team discussion, and then back to the other end to sweep this rock. Yeah, both teams do have a couple 90-second timeouts each. Um, they hadn't chosen to use one there. Uh, Newfoundland, uh, they don't have a, uh, a coach or an alternate with them, so if they did call timeout, just a team discussion, which is always uh, handy as well. Sometimes you just want to have a moment to think without worrying about the clock. And as this one comes, it's starting to curl pretty nicely here. And just on the nose. Alberta now looking to get a little bit aggressive. Uh, they'll be looking for that hit and roll, which would put them in a really nice position, which start to sort of block off the uh, efficacy of the Newfoundland guards, at least uh, for Newfoundland, and so could potentially use their own guards against them here if this is made. And Alberta's been good on hits today. This one curling a bit here. May end up just being on the nose or a little off, and a little off and rolls out, but that's not too bad. That's the second time we've seen a lot of curl off of that path, too, so. That's right, the other one uh, from Newfoundland went there and, and rolled over, so something to keep an eye on as it heads into center and uh, crosses over the line there, so. And that was solid weight as well, so noticing uh, something to keep in mind for both of the teams if you're getting, you know, that much curl, especially with a solid weight like they chose to use there. It, it's something to keep an eye on. Asking for a little less ice there, but we have seen a few draws in this path. Not move too much. We saw that going down the other way, actually, where Newfoundland had a couple hangouts, so mindful of that. So I think a, a good call there to move the ice in a little bit. Little directional here. She's 
getting on the corner to try and get the curl. Yeah, it's starting to move now, actually, as they go for that little bump. And, oh, just not quite, quite there, there. So Solid effort by the sweeper, though. Yeah, the directional sweeping certainly uh, not as effective as it was ever since uh, Broomgate, as it was known, of uh, 2015. We saw a lot of uh, crazy moves. We saw rocks that could actually be, that were under curling, be over curled by the efficacy of those broom heads. And so um, all the players here uh, at this championship at, at any provincial or national level here in Canada, it's a, a World Curling Federation approved uh, broom heads. So that's why you see all of them using those uh, banana yellow uh, brooms there. Uh, and so they're all uh, all the same fabric. As this draw comes in here, it looks like it might be a little bit warm. It's always tricky to transition from just throwing a hit to throwing a draw and trying to bring that weight back down and remember what it is. But uh, nice uh, spacing out for those, and those uh, rocks are split in the house there. So uh, one in the top eight and one in the back eight. So. Not really worried about any doubles or anything like that. So good uh, good to take it back a little farther there. You don't want to be stuck around the T-line and leave a freeze. This is one comes up here as it they look to come down to it we'll see if it curls enough it's getting pretty good movement now we'll see if it gets enough to oh, and unfortunately not so close just rubs it right at the end there and Newfoundland having a lot of really really near misses there where it's just a little bit off on on either side and so unfortunate for them there got a little unlucky with that one that one just didn't quite want to move Alberta's looking at placement. They want to make sure that they're putting this rock in the right place and not setting up any doubles. Yeah, they want to continue to sit a, a couple, that's for sure. As long as they've got at least two in there at, at all times, they'll be able to get a force, which is what they're looking for here. But not to, you know, too concerned about steals or anything like that. They just want to maintain control, force a, a point out of... Uh, Newfoundland and get the hammer back. Again, I like the communication that's going on between this Alberta team. Getting in the hack, still, you know, really communicating exactly where she wants this. Yeah, it can be easy to be a, a little bit more lax with it when you're up as many as you are, or even if you're down, but both teams doing a good job right now of making sure they still are aware of what's going on and what's being called, and so, um, Good team effort for both of them on that front, certainly. Nice release. Where? They're calling for top 12 here for where it's going to end up. And that's a good spot. I think top 12, top 8 is a good spot to Absolutely. put this stone. So they sweep this one in here as it continues to curl. But great effort by the sweepers there, and they'll get it just to the side of the 12 foot. And so weight was nice there, but uh, as it starts to overcurl, as the rings are a circle, you start to run out of paint there as it continues to curl away. But, Why uh, can't they make those rings bigger? <laughs> Some days they're just not big enough. Just a big square, maybe. <laughs> big box. Yeah. Oh, switching stones. I don't know if it was just a 7-8 mix-up or if she's electing to throw her 8 first. We'll have a second. Yeah, not sure. And, and something that uh, they may, if they notice any discrepancies in the rocks. For the finals here, uh, for the teams in the finals, they will be able to select stones from across uh, all of the 8 sheets. So as they play across those, if they notice anything in the rocks, they may be thinking about singling a couple out uh, or just noticing a few things so that if it comes down to it at the end of the week, they have a good good grasp on them. for them. Nice weight. Yeah, this is a good weight here. And 
That's a good spot there. It's, uh, I think it's second shot, it looks to me. Yeah, and it's got a little bit of backing, so it could make it tricky to remove, but yep. still lots of space there. Yeah, needing to hit this one on the high side, though, so as if it gets close to nose, you could certainly jam it on the back. Uh, if Alberta removes their back stone, actually, they'll probably be okay with that there. They don't really need it anymore as long as they're sitting a couple. This is just about clearing that red out and getting the force. Alberta's last here. Annette Dupont, she throws her final stone in the sixth end. Sweepers are on this one right away. This one's curling. To be careful now, this jam might be in play as they're called off. Yeah, they need to go one way. There we go. And it, they do avoid the jam there and stick the shooter. So they are sitting four as Newfoundland will just be forced to draw for their single here. Well played in by Alberta. Absolutely. And again, Newfoundland is just taking the curl so that uh, if they have that backing, if they need it, to sit first. Yep, that's right. This is the right turn to play at it, certainly. And they'll have uh, the backing to nestle on to if should they need it, till they'll said close draw weight all game here. So Absolutely. She's thrown this a few times tonight, so, or today. So. Yeah, she's at a lot near, near and around the forefoot there, so... Always a bit of pressure, certainly when you're drawing against four, but uh, you know, in terms of, we talk about it being a mental game, but it, you just focus on throwing the T-line weight and and uh, T-line top eight and letting your sweepers take care of the rest. If it's a little light and it's a little warm, you look at the backing and where the line is for that. She's saying it's all you, so it's in your hands now, sweepers. Yeah, it looks to be happy with the weight as they'll just clean it in. It looks good here. That yeah, looks to be no problems there as she comes up just around the tee line and gets her single, but it will be handshakes and Alberta will pick up the win there. Uh, nine to three as Newfoundland gets uh, one more single to end it, but uh, that will be the final on this game. We'll update you on the other sheets, but uh, thank you so much for watching. The next game coming up is uh, the Territories versus Nunavut. So we'll keep an eye out for that.